Hi, this is Ushio, and this is Sable's Grimoire. This is a new visual novel that we're checking out today. Let's get this story underway. Amadronia Academy, the alma mater of many of the greatest magi in the world. A place of learning and discovery, a home to those who have powers beyond their understanding, a refuge for races oppressed by humanity. Notorious though it may be, Amadronia Academy is a place where my kind can feel at ease. It's where we magic users can band together and learn about our mysterious powers without fearing prejudice and backlash from envious and the scornful. It's a place open to all races, ages and nationalities. Anyone who wields magic power, great or small, may become a student here. And for the next three to six years, I'm going to be living among them. As a mere human being, it's quite possible that I'm not going to fit in. Magic academies such as this are typically filled to the brim with demi-human races, many of which are gifted in the arcane arts. Compared to them, human beings are powerless, so few of us are capable of using magic to begin with, and even for those of us who can, we cannot measure up to elite demi-humans. Nonetheless, I plan to turn many heads during my time at Amadronia. Natural ability is not everything, what I lack in raw power, I more than make up for in technique, understanding and creativity. Mark my words, by the time I leave the academy, everyone's going to know the name Sable Labia. And that is our statement of intent. We're going to attend school and hopefully we're going to learn the way of magic. I breathe a deep sigh as the fatigue leaves my body. Closing my eyes, I stretch out my back and neck, which have grown stiff during my lengthy wait. Patiently, painstakingly, I have sat idly for the past hour or so, struggling to stay awake as I wait for my train. Damn, I'm starting to feel like I'm never going to reach the academy. My train was supposed to be here half an hour ago. What's the hold up? I glance up at the physical data terminal overhead as I silently complain. Its display, which is supposed to update in real time the moment anything changes, makes no mention of any delays or changes in the schedule. As far as I can tell, my train should have already come and gone. There are no delays mentioned, and I'm definitely on the right train line. I'm not heading in the wrong direction either. On the other hand, I haven't seen anybody else wearing the academy uniform around here. Is it a coincidence? Is there an obvious explanation that's eluding me? Perhaps I'd better look a little bit deeper. I walk away from the other people on the platform, intentionally isolating myself. Once I'm far enough away that I can move around without bumping into anybody, I thrust my right hand out and turn my palm upwards. Terminal, possibly the most well-known and widely used spell in the world. Despite being considered a spell of advanced difficulty, Terminal is, for many, the first spell they learn, or at least the first spell they master. And it's no wonder why. Who wouldn't want a gateway to their own mind, not to mention the minds of others always at their fingertips? Terminal is the weightless, translucent, ethereal equivalent of a personal computer. The data is all stored inside one's mind, and by connecting to the minds of others, terminals allow people to communicate and to share information. As the number of people capable of using Terminal expands, so too does the vast pool of information at our disposal. It's become an invaluable tool, particularly for students, and as a result, the spell has naturally grown more and more popular. Now then, let's see here, train timetable. Tapping the air, just before the floating screen in front of me, I search my own mind for the train timetable I viewed before leaving home. That's weird, I definitely didn't mix up the time or the train line. So where? Oh, is this the terminal? Oh, hello? I dispel my terminal and turn my head as a surprise shout reaches my ears. Hey, 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 that was a terminal, right? Wasn't that a terminal? I mean, yeah, who, who are you? Show it to me. No, no, I but already... Show me, show me! I unconsciously take a step back as the energetic girl in front of me pushes forward. Seeing her enthusiasm in full force, I breathe a sigh of resignation and raise my hand. Fine, take a step back, please. Nodding happily, the girl does as I say. So be it. Oh, wow, it really is a terminal. A real live terminal in the flesh. No, terminals aren't alive, nor do they have any flesh. It's just a projection of... Hey, does this thing have any games on it? Can you access the internet through this thing? Hey, stop that. My terminal disappears as the girl in front of me puts her hand through it. Oh, it's gone. I didn't break it, did I? What? What kind of idiot are you? I stop myself mid-sentence. As foolish as the girl before me seems, I know that I shouldn't look down on her. There's nothing shameful about not knowing how a spell works. I can't call her an idiot for being unfamiliar with the workings of something considered to be an advanced technique. Thinking that way, I sigh once more and then raise my head and look her in the eye. It's not broken, you broke it. No, it's fine. 
It isn't broken. You just disrupted the spell, that's all. Oh, I did something like that. That's right. Terminal is a useful spell, but the screen it creates is very fragile. That's why I stopped short of ever actually touching the screen. Watch. I separate from the girl and raise my hand once more, calling forth my terminal. With the screen in front of me, I use my other hand to interact with the untouchable device, sending random commands to the screen as I demonstrate how a terminal was used. Well, you're right. You didn't touch it, but it still reacted to your movement. Yeah, you got it. Terminals might be useful, but they're easily dispelled, so although you don't have to worry about breaking them, it's difficult to maintain one for long. Oh, I see. So that's what they're like. Amazing. A joyful smile creeps onto the girl's face as she stares into my eyes. Thanks. That was a very enlightening experience. I look forward to learning more from you in the future, Senpai. Suddenly acting reserved and courteous, the girl lightly bows her head. Oh, don't worry about it. I become rather single-minded too when I see something outside of my understanding, so I'll get it. Wait, Senpai. You have no idea how glad I am that you're here, Senpai, and not just because I finally got to see Terminal up close for the first time. Before I saw you here, I thought I'd gotten on the wrong platform, but if you're here, then this train must be going to Amadronia Academy after all. I raise an eyebrow as I try to piece together the words of the peculiar girl in front of me. While it's true that I'm heading to the academy, and I've just become a student, I'm definitely no older than this girl. Furthermore, today will be the first day at Amadronia Academy. It's far too early for anyone to be calling me a senior. Hey, senpai, senpai, listen, I got a question. I ruffle my hair with my hand as I shake my head. Without asking what she wants, I voice my own thoughts instead. Stop calling me that, would ya? I'm not your senior in any sense of the word. Aside from knowledge pertaining to magic, apparently. Besides, why senpai anyway? You don't look Japanese to me. Senpai, don't be rude. There are some things you just shouldn't say to a person. Even if you doubt somebody's background, you aren't allowed to call them out on it. Okay, whatever. I don't agree with that, but I'm not about to get into an argument over this. Giving up without a fight, I shrug and move the conversation along. Fine, let's say you're Japanese. I am Japanese, one quarter. Like it matters. Even if that's the case, that's not the only problem. I mean, aren't we the same age? And this is the first time we've met, right? So why are you calling me that? Oh, I see. You don't want me to call you Senpai. Well, I don't really care. It's just a bit misleading and... No, 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 I get it. I understand completely. Wow, how could have I been so rude? I was so captivated that I forgot to even introduce myself, let alone ask for your name. Completely misunderstanding my concern, the girl in front of me smiles brightly. My name is Rei Mikawa, starting to say I'm a student at Amadronia Academy. So let's see. My hobbies include cooking and eating, and food preparation, the... Your name's plenty. Save the full introduction for when we get to class. And just how much do you like food anyway? I stare at Ray's stomach and then run my eyes over the rest of her body. At a glance, it would seem that she's the type who eats a lot but never puts weight on. Well, Senpai, aren't you going to introduce yourself? Or could it be that you want me to call you Senpai after all? Oh, sorry. I straighten up my back and put on a smile. My name is Sable, like you. Today is going to be my first day at Amadronia Academy. What? Ray suddenly screams loudly in shock, drawing curious gazes from all around us. You're only now just entering the academy, and you can already use advanced magic? Are you an elf? No, I'm human. I just practice and study a lot, that's all. Not that I could blame Ray for thinking otherwise. I might not be a powerful mage, but by human standards, I'm actually pretty high up there. Many demi-human races such as elves and pixies are known for being gifted at magic. Their weakest and most feeble-minded kin are far more talented than even the greatest of human mages, to the point where the comparison is downright embarrassing. And yet, despite the significant gap between us, many of these exceptional races are also similar to human beings, at least in terms of appearance. Elves, for example, are often mistaken for human beings, and human mages are in turn mistaken for elves. It's a common misunderstanding, and even though I personally don't take offence to being called an elf, there are many who feel quite differently. Perhaps I should strive to become a tad more observant from now on myself. From what I understand, Amadronia Academy is packed full of different kinds of demi-humans. I'd hate to cause a ruckus by accidentally offending them or misunderstanding their intentions. Well, you're human, and you've already learned an advanced spell like Terminal. That's amazing. I stop zoning out and I focus on Ray once again, only to find her staring at me with eyes filled with wonder and excitement. You look like you're my age, but we're on totally different levels. You must be a prodigy or something. No, I wouldn't go that far. 
Like I said, I just study and practice a lot. It took me a long time to get to this level. Amadronia Academy's only strict requirement for entry is that a person has awakened as a mage. As such, it's not unusual for people with differing levels to be on the same grade. The Academy doesn't appear to discriminate based on age, race or natural ability either. So in some cases, elves who are hundreds of years old may study side by side with teenage humans like myself. It's a system which has come under fire often over the years, but despite the repeated criticisms, the old system still remains in place. Wait a sec, how did you learn an advanced spell like Terminal without attending Magic Academy? Did you have a tutor? Nah, nothing like that. I just didn't have anything better to do, so I devoted my free time to studying. Well, there's also the fact that I'm kind of obsessive. When I find something interesting, I can't bring myself to turn away. Oh, I know what you mean. Like when you see a kitty cat roaming around in the middle of the street, you wonder, does the cat have a home, or is it a stray, so you spend the rest of the day following it around? I mean, I think your obsession's a little different than mine. Anyway, you're starting at Amadronia Academy too, right? That's right, starting today, I'm going to be a world-class cleric. A cleric? Wow, you're specialising already. Although every mage is forced to learn the basics, we're inevitably given choices to make regarding on what we want to study. After a person's first three years at the academy, this comes to a climax and we're told to choose a specific field of study. By our sixth year, we're expected to be ready to enter the workforce in that field. It would seem that, without having attended a single class, Ray has already decided she wants to become a cleric, a healer who can save people even on the brink of death. It's a noble profession, but not one which many people aspire toward. I sure am. Why waste time dabbling when you already know what you want to do? Besides, I'll have you know that I'm quite the expert when it comes to healing magic. Oh, that's surprising. There aren't many of our age who can use spiritual magic effectively. Do you come from a family of healers? That's right, the women in my family have all been priestesses and nurses for generations. I'm the first one to use actual magic though. Aha. Uh -huh. I stare in disbelief at Ray, the wannabe cleric, who apparently doesn't understand the difference between healing magic and medicine. Coming from a family of nurses really isn't the same as being born into a lineage of spiritual magic practitioners. Does Ray not understand why this distinction is important, or is she doing this on purpose just to mess with me? Shaking my head, I once again gaze toward the physical data terminal hanging overhead. Seeing me stare at the device, Ray follows my line of sight. Oh, it's still not here. If I was alone, I probably would have asked someone if I was on the right place by now. Yeah, I'm beginning to think that we should do that anyway. The timetable I looked up said the train should have been here a long time ago. There haven't been any delays mentioned, so... I stop mid-sentence as I notice that Ray's figure has disappeared from my side. When I locate Ray, I find her talking to a middle-aged man, seemingly asking him about the train timetable. Ray then speaks to a few more people, and after gathering enough information to satisfy herself, she faces me once more. Yo, I'm back, miss me. You were gone for like less than a minute. Oh, no need to be shy. Just be honest and say that you miss me. Aha. Uh -huh. So, did you find anything out? Are we in the right place? You totally miss me. Not letting up, Ray continues to smirk proudly. I sigh and place my hand on my face, at which point Ray starts to move along. I asked a few people, and they all said the train would be here shortly. Apparently, most people heading to the academy get off at the platform before this one, since the express trains skip this platform. Okay, so what did you say? My eyes open wide as Ray's words register in my mind. I am on the correct train line, I did get the right time and I am heading in the right direction. But I transferred at the wrong station. For crying out loud, how could I make such a stupid mistake? I knew I shouldn't have distracted myself by studying on the ride. Don't worry, we've got plenty of time before the opening ceremony. Even if this train takes longer, we'll still reach the academy with time to spare. The opening ceremony isn't the problem. This is your first day too, right? I don't know about you, but I was planning on buying some spare uniforms and taking a look around campus. If you wait until after the ceremony, the place is going to be packed, and it will be hard to get anywhere without bumping into anybody or getting pushed along. I don't understand. Have you never been to Amadronio Academy before? You should have already visited during last month's orientation seminar, right? There was an orientation? I mean, yeah. I received my letter one week before the seminar, didn't you? Amadronia Academy still sends out physical letters? What the hell's wrong with them? They're a prestigious magic academy for crying out loud, and I already gave them my terminal ID when I enrolled. How hard is it for them to send a notification to my terminal? That's how they notified me of my placement. Is it so hard to do the same for matters such as this? Inwardly venting my anger, I feel myself becoming rapidly disillusioned. 
I never gave Amadronio Academy a mailing address since it wasn't listed as a mandatory field in the application. And for that same reason, I assumed they'd send the irrelevant information directly to my terminal, like they have until now. If important information is going to be sent that way, why didn't they make a mailing address a requirement? Uh, Sable? You okay? What? Oh, sorry, I'm just lamenting. Anyway, it's not that big a deal, I guess. If everybody else has already seen the campus, then I might be able to wander around freely after all. Do you want me to show you around? I've only been there once before, but I still know the layout of the campus better than you do. I wouldn't be so sure about that. I summon forth my terminal once again, bringing up a map of the campus. Wow, is that the academy? Sure is. Most second year students know how to use terminals, so it's not surprising that you can get detailed maps of the academy with ease. As long as I have this, I can view every corner of the academy and immediately discern the location of whichever classroom I desire. So, don't worry about me. Armed with my trusty terminal, I oh hey! Ray once again puts her hand through the terminal, causing it to disappear. Why'd you do that? Oh, if your terminal's so great, why don't you ask it instead? What? Pouting unhappily, Ray walks toward the edge of the platform. Before I can address her once again, I realise that our train is finally pulling into the platform. Ray then enters the carriage ahead of me, putting our conversation on hold as I weave through a crowd of other passengers and boarding the train at last. Okay, we're going to ride the train to school. Finally. Here we are, as the train pulls into the station outside of Amadronia Academy, I'm finally greeted by a sight I've only ever seen in pictures and recordings. Amadronia Academy, not a projection, not a photograph, but the real deal. The moment I depart from the carriage, I understand why Amadronia Academy was built in a rather inconvenient location. High quality ether, a requirement for any mage serious about furthering their arts, is absorbed into my body through my skin. It's a difficult feeling to describe, but for a mage, there is nothing greater. Just as muddy rainwater is incomparable to clean drinking water, so too is the ether surrounding this academy leagues ahead of that found in the city. Compared to the town in which I grew up, this is undoubtedly a location far better suited to the nurturing of a young mage's growth. For all the projections and immersive scenescapes I've experienced, none of them even come close to the real thing. There's no way that Amadronio Academy was built here by chance. The purity and density of the ether here is unbelievable. Even a new student like me can appreciate that fact. If it's here, in a place filled with such high quality ether, and so far away from the judgement of ordinary human beings, I've got no doubt that I'm going to be able to perform feats I thought impossible back home. Walking a few steps in front of Ray, I enter the academy. Even though there are other people scattered about, for the most part, Ray and I are undisturbed. It seems that existing students are in class, as are their teachers. The only people wandering around aimlessly right now are new students, many of whom are feeling whimsical and showing bright smiles as they enjoy the ambience. Okay, feels good to be back. I almost forgotten how mystical the place felt. I refrain from uttering the word ether and lecturing Ray on the reason for that mystical feeling. Instead, I simply nod. Yeah, you're right, this might be my first time here in the flesh, but the feeling Amadronio Academy gives off definitely lives up to the hype. Ray stretches her back and inhales deeply, like one would when lapping up the fresh air in the countryside. Aether is absorbed through the skin, and is not something we inhale, so her actions don't actually accomplish anything. Nevertheless, judging by the pleased expression on her face, the placebo effect may be enough for Ray. So, where to first? We still have half an hour to go before the opening ceremony. Are you going to your dorm room first, or are you going to socialise? I mean, I'm thinking of just going straight to the auditorium, so we don't get lost and be late. But before that, I'm going to visit the cafe. Cafeteria? But didn't you just... Before I can remind me that she was eating snacks the entire train ride here, I remember her list of hobbies. As it turns out, she wasn't kidding. Ray is, despite her appearances, a glutton. Well, have fun. I'm going to take a look around. Okay, I'll see you later. Oh, one more thing before you go. Ray straightens her back and faces me with a smile on her face. I hope we get placed in the same class, Sable. Ray skips off happily, with a slight tinge of red in her cheeks. As she quickly disappears from my sight, I don't have the heart to tell Ray that our class listings might have already been posted. Or that we're in separate classes. Okay. Without bothering to summon my terminal, I walk around the courtyard outside, heading nowhere in particular. At this point in time, most of the new students are inside, either unpacking their belongings or getting changed before the opening ceremony. As someone who wore their uniform on the train ride over and sent their luggage to the academy ahead of time, I felt no obligation to do the same. 
For now, my only duty is to familiarise myself with the campus before the opening ceremony begins. It might seem a little unsociable of me to avoid everyone like this, but I guess it can't be helped. They're all either talking in the hallway with their friends or preparing in their rooms anyway. Even if I did make an effort right now, it wouldn't make much of a difference. I should wait until after the ceremony is over before trying to socialise. Happy to put off the imminent social activity, I walk through the empty courtyard while feeling justified in my choice. It's not as if I don't want to make friends, I'm just more interested in Amadronia Academy itself right now. Once I've had a good look around, then I can worry about other people. The Academy sense gates didn't do Amadronia any justice at all, this place is nothing like the recordings I've seen. Not that I'm surprised by that, generally only 5th year students are skilled enough to even record a sense scape, let alone a decent one, and they'd be too busy with their studies to make anything too elaborate. I should consider myself lucky to have experienced any sense gates of the Academy at all. Senscapes, complete recordings of the sight, smells, touch and taste of everything which the recorder experiences. Senscapes are often thought of as the magical equivalent of a virtual reality technology, cranked all the way up to a brand new extreme. Everything feels completely real, there's no discernible difference between running your hands along a stone wall in a senscape and doing so in real life. Any experience in one is exactly the same as the other. To a majority of individuals, there is only one noteworthy difference between experiencing reality and immersing yourself in a senscape. Put simply, it's the lack of control. As nice as it is to be able to freely move around as I see fit, walking around for real is pretty tiring. Maybe I should head back earlier than planned. Besides, as interesting as it may be to wander around, I can't afford to fully relax when I know that time isn't on my side. I'll just take a proper look later when I have nothing else to do. Resolving myself to put off further exploration till later, I turn toward the academy in order to return to where I come from. The second I turn around, however, I notice someone blocking my path. Oh, hello? He must have crept up on me. I didn't hear you at all. Oh, mind your tongue, human. I did no such thing. I was simply curious as to where a newcomer such as yourself might be headed. I most assuredly was not creeping around. Oh, okay. I take a step back. Look at the obstinate girl in front of me. Long, silver hair, bright yellow eyes, and above all, the characteristic ears of an elf. At a glance, it's obvious which race this girl belongs to. What's up? Do my ears truly fascinate you so? Oh, I didn't mean to stare. It's just, I don't really know any demi-humans, so, um... I will forgive this transgression, however, I must warn you that others might not be so accommodating. If this is your first time living among other races, then you'd best be mindful of how you act around others. Yeah, you're completely right. My apologies, Miss, uh... Even if I gave you my name, you're not going to remember it. You probably wouldn't even be able to pronounce it. So, how about a nickname? I've got to call you something. My non-elven acquaintances call me Leisha. Leisha, okay, nice name. Of course it is. What were you expecting? Despite her harsh tone, Leisha appears to be embarrassed as she gives me her name. Defensive though she may be, it seems Leisha hasn't actually rejected my presence just yet. So, are you a new student too? Clearly I am. Were I in a different grade, I'd be in class right now, rather than speaking to you. Mm, not necessarily. I hear that once you reach your third year at the academy, you pretty much make your own schedule. Or you could just be truant. Though, I guess a serious person like you wouldn't be skipping class, would ya? You assume that I'm a serious person? Am I wrong? Hmm, not entirely. Be that as it may, you shouldn't judge others based on their appearance, especially if you aren't familiar with non-human races. You could get yourself into a lot of trouble by making assumptions about the students here. Oh, yeah, right. You did say that I should be mindful about how I address others. I'll try to keep your words of wisdom in mind. Thinking about Leisha's warning for the moment, I turn my palm upward. I bring my terminal up once more and search through the list of students in my class 1C. Let's see, Leisha. I don't see... Hey! No sooner have I called it forth than my terminal disappears. Sticking her hand straight through my terminal, just like Ray before her, Misha suddenly draws close. Not you too, why does everyone do that? You're able to use terminal? Misha brings her face close to mine. Her expression is serious, yet there's a sense of unease and urgency in her tone of voice. I mean, yeah. I was just wondering if we're in the same class, so I was going to check this year's advisor's posts. Ordinarily, students need to wait until the opening ceremony to find out which class they're being placed in, and who their classmates are going to be. However, the fact is that the information they seek is actually made available ahead of time. It's simply inaccessible to most. To view the listings, one must be either a teacher or a student attending Amadronia Academy and be able to use Terminal. 
This means that early access to class listings, among other tidbits of information, has become a kind of a reward for talented first year students. Though for the most part, it's something that's simply taken advantage of by those with siblings or friends in higher grades. Unbelievable to think that a mere human would master the usage of a terminal before me. Uh, no, I'm not a master of anything, I just... Human, what's your name? Sable. Sable, Labia. Labia, Sable. Leisha averts her gaze for a moment, and she loses herself in thought. After a few moments, Leisha's eyes open wide, and she looks me in the eye once more. Impossible. You were ranked in the bottom half of this year's applicants. How could you possibly know an advanced spell already? I smile wryly and look away. Unfortunately, it's just as Leisha says, I ranked quite poorly on the entrance exam for Amadronia Academy. Truthfully, our individual rankings aren't all that important. We're here to learn how to use our powers for the good of society after all, not to compete. Be that as it may, our rankings do serve a purpose, and I take no pride in my poor performance in the exam. Had I ranked well, I would have started my life here with an increased allowance from the academy. I would also be given more leeway on assignments, preferential treatment from teachers and other such perks. As a lower ranking student, however, not only will I miss out on such perks, but also, nobody will expect anything from me. Just hard work and determination, I guess. Terminal is an advanced spell, but it isn't strenuous. Even someone as weak as me can... No, wait, forget about that for a second. How did you know what rank I had? You didn't seriously memorise the ranking of every student in our grade, did you? Does that surprise you? Listen well, human. We elves possess many abilities which your kind does not. Unfaltering memory and a natural gift for magic are just the tip of the iceberg. You best not underestimate us. Leisha begins to zone out as she speaks. Her words slow down, and she cuts herself off mid-sentence, losing herself in thought. No, couldn't be. Did you purposely do poorer on the exa entrance exam so that people would underestimate you? Uh, what are you talking about? I tried really hard on that exam, okay? I just hadn't studied the right material. And I was completely destroyed by the physical portion. Oh, I understand now. You play the fool, but you're undoubtedly a truly frightful being. What? You talking about me? I'm not playing anything, and I've never frightened anyone in my life. Silence. You'll not fool me a second time. Curses to think that I was so proud of myself for having been named Valedictorian. How frustrating for someone so gifted to be hiding among the rabble was an unforgivable oversight on my part. Oi, who are you calling rabble? Leisha snorts and turns her head. So be it. I may have gotten ahead of myself, but I have not lost yet. I will not forget this, Sable Labia. Mark my words, I will surpass you. Leaving behind such a declaration, Leisha walks straight past me toward the entrance of the academy. For a moment, I simply stare at her receding figure, trying to make sense of our bizarre meeting. But before I can think about it too deeply, I realise that my time's up. The opening ceremony will begin any minute now, and I've got no time to waste. Okay, and I think that that will do for our introductory episode. This is Usho signing off, and hopefully I'll see you next time.